we're going to be working with CSS3 animations and transitions. CSS animations and transitions are really a wonderful and amazing way that you can add all sorts of interactivity and sophisticated animations to your web pages. The advantage of using CSS3 is that the file size remains very lightweight. All of the animations are generated via code so it doesn't really take up that much file size and it's pretty well supported in most of the modern browsers. I'm going to show you some basics of things that can be done using transitions and transformations. For instance you can see how I've made a rollover link right here but you can see that the background color fades in and out so this is something that we're going to do in just a couple minutes. What we'll do once we have a handle of how the transitions and transformations work is we're going to go back to the Nessie website and we're going to add a little bit more interactivity. When we hover over any of our buttons, you'll see that not only do the icons raise up when you're over that section, but also the text is going to fade and change colors when you hover over. The other thing that we're going to be adding is we're going to be building this gallery page which is going to have a gallery of images and when you're on the large screen mode of our project we'll go ahead and we'll create some animation on some various properties so that these images get a little bit bigger and they are more predominantly displayed with a drop shadow. So let's go ahead and learn about CSS transitions. Before I actually take you into a file, I just wanted to direct you to the w3.org website. And if you go to their website and search for CSS3 transitions, you can get all sorts of information. So this is going to let you know all sorts of stuff about what CSS3 transitions actually do and what they are going to affect on the page. CSS transitions allow property changes in CSS values to occur smoothly over a specified duration of time. So what this means is that CSS transitions animate the change in various CSS properties like background color. They animate or give life to those elements. If you want more information you can certainly read through and I would recommend that you do read through this web page so that you can find out more about how CSS transitions work. They have all sorts of information and examples and they have code that you can actually test out so there is a plethora of information available on this website. We're going to start off by just creating a animation on a basic link. So. The page that I'm going to start working with is simply this page that I just showed you in the browser. There's just an A tag that says I am a link. And I've already created some embedded style tags so that I can go ahead and add the styles to my page. And since we're not going to use a ton of styles, we'll just add them right to this particular page. I'm going to begin off by creating a rule on my body tag. And I'm just going to use shorthand notation to define some of the font parameters for my page. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to define some basic rules on our A tag. So on the A tag we're going to define things like the background color and I'm going to set the background color to a orange color. I'm going to set the text color to white and I'm going to set some padding. And we'll also go ahead and just remove the text decoration on the link. And then we're going to make a rule for a hover and all we'll do on a hover is simply change the background color. And I'm just going to specify that this be a blue shade. So if I save my page right now and we go back into the browser and refresh, you can see that I've simply changed this link to look more like a button. When I hover over the link you can see it switches from yellow to blue. This is just a regular hover state on a button. What we're going to do now though is we're going to use some CSS3 to add some more interactivity to this. Remember what I just told you about the definition of transition properties. The W3 states that the changes will occur over a specified duration. So what we want to do is we want to specify the duration by adding a declaration 
for the property that we want to change and the duration which is the time in which we want this to occur for. So whenever you're creating rules for transition, transition declarations always get applied to the initial state. So that's something that you're going to have to remember. So I'm going to go into my A state right here and I'm going to go ahead and define a transition for property. On the dis transition property, I'm going to define that I want this to affect the background. So I'll just specify transition property background. I'm just identifying the property that I want to transition. And then I'm going to specify my transition duration. And the transition duration that we want can be specified in seconds or milliseconds. If I wanted this to occur over two seconds, I would type 2S. S stands for seconds. If I save my page and we go back into the browser and refresh, you can see when I hover over my link, I get a slow transition from orange to blue, and then when I hover away, it goes back from blue to orange. Now this transition is occurring pretty slowly, especially for a hover state. I just wanted to show you though so you could visually see it. We can alter this number, so if I make this point eight. S, it's going to occur much faster, a little less than a second. And now when I hover over, you can see that the transition occurs much more quickly. So just remember, applying CSS3 transitions is fairly easy to do. The key is remembering that you always apply the transition to the initial state. As for other properties that you can transition, if you go back to that same page I had showed you before, the w3.org's CSS3 transition page, scrolling down closer to the bottom of the page, it will list all the properties of CSS that you can transition. And you can see there is a huge long list of properties that you are allowed to transition. So you really have a slew of things that you can alter and transition on your web page. The other place that you're going to want to look into is the Can I Use website. So if you go to caniuse.com and search for transitions, you can see the support in the browsers. You can see in most modern browsers, the CSS3 transitions are very well supported. However, if you do want to support older browsers and if I click show all it'll give me a list of the older browsers you can see that many of the older versions of Firefox, Chrome, Safari and even Opera are supported but you will need to use the vendor prefix in order to gain full support. It is worth noting that IE does not support transitions until version 10 so if you are trying to create something that's going to be supported in the older browsers, either use the vendor prefixes, and remember if we wanted to include vendor prefixes, they would get defined first. So if I wanted to put vendor prefixes on here, I would define them by doing my dash webkit dash and then specifying transition property. That would be for the webkit, and if I wanted to support Mozilla, it would be dash moz dash and if I want to support Opera it would be dash o dash. Microsoft does not support vendor prefixes so there is no sense in putting one on there for the Microsoft versions it just is something that is not supported until the version 10 and above. But if I add my vendor prefixes, I'll get very good support in the older versions of WebKit, Mozilla, and Opera browsers as well. For the purpose of these lectures, unless I have to use the vendor prefixes for support in any of the modern browsers, I will not be including them. But if you do want to have a more robust support for older browsers, I recommend that you add those to your pages.